Jumping in in the number five side of the best wireless gaming headsets for the PS5 is the Sony 3D Plus, typically priced at 99 bucks. If you want to check out any of the five headsets in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's talk about the 3D Plus. Firstly, the build quality here is completely made of plastic, but it feels durable. The curved design language and colorway matches the PS5's design, and there's definitely something to be said for, well, aesthetics. There are small PlayStation logos on the sides, but overall, I think it's a very attractive looking headset. I think they nailed it with the design. And it's pretty lightweight at 292 grams, so overall fatigue due to weight is, well, very, very minimal. Now, sound quality on the 3D Plus is pretty good for the price point. It is a bit muddy on the upper end of the frequency range, and the mid sound length are pulled way down, but for the price, it has very decent bass that's definitely more bassy than you would expect for this price point. Not the most amazing sound quality ever, but for a hundred bucks, I think it's very in line with what it should be. And when you're in game, most games sound great, especially with those mids pulled down. A lot of times it's going to make gaming sound fairly good, but I personally would have pulled those mids a little bit up, but overall, it's definitely a good sound quality for the price. For controls on the left side, there is a rocker for game slash chat balance, a switch for voice monitoring, a volume rocker, a mic mute button. Then you have a USB-C for charging, a 3.5 millimeter input and a power button. There's no controls on the right side. Now these buttons are very thin and similarly shaped, so it's hard to differentiate them. The one thing that I absolutely love about the controls is the on and off button that is not a like hold and press and hold and press to turn off, it is a switch. So you switch it on and switch it off. It does take some getting used to to just have that muscle memory and to know where your thumb needs to go, uh, but it's definitely not going to be as quick as some other headsets that kind of differentiate the buttons a little better. As for connectivity, obviously this is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, and you can also use this wired with a 3.5 millimeter cable. And as for battery life, it's not the best in the world, but again, at this price point, we expect that. This is getting around 13 hours of usage. Now for comfort, these are the least comfortable on the list. The leather earmuffs are definitely the least comfortable part of this headset. The headband for me is honestly great. I don't mind the headband at all. It's just that those earmuffs are a little firm. Now I will say these are not even in the top 10 most uncomfortable headsets I've used. So don't think that these are like horrible, but those earmuffs are definitely on the firmer side and better suited for medium to smaller head sizes. If you have a large head size, I wouldn't even consider these just because there's no like full adjustable band. It kind of just uses that tensioning band, which I don't think is really gonna work for head sizes that are much larger. As for mic quality, this is again, the worst on the list. Not terrible for an integrated microphone, people will still be able to understand you, but it is not a boom arm, so it's just not going to be as good. But don't take my word for it, take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Sony 3D Pulses. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And that is how it sounds, but with that, let's move on to the number four spot. And this is the SteelSeries Arctis Nova 7. This comes in at $179.99, definitely a bump up in price, but everything really gets a bump up at the same time. Build quality here gets very unique, having a steel top band. This makes it very, very strong, but not super flexible. Although in most situations, this shouldn't be an issue at all. Besides that, it's pretty much standard Steel Series having very tight adjustable headbands, which I actually appreciate an integrated microphone that can be pulled out to a boom arm. And it even has some little Steel Series plastic logos that can be popped off and customized that are magnetic. So that's kind of cool. As for controls on the left side, you have a mic mute button, volume wheel, and then a 3.5 millimeter jack. The controls here, very easy to just find once you get used to them because there are like two levels to the headset. So once you find which level it's on, kind of like the curvature of the headset, then it's super easy to find the controls. On the right side then, there is a Bluetooth pairing button, power button, and a chat mix wheel to tune the game sound to the chat sound ratio in game. Then lastly, you have a USB-C for charging. Now sound quality here is really quite impressive. Out of the box, the EQ is tuned pretty much perfectly. The mids and trebles are crisp, but not overbearing, and the low frequency response is good, making for a deeper, richer bass. However, some may still want more bass, it doesn't have as much as the Sony's. However, for the price, I'm really impressed with the sound quality. Spatial awareness in game is also great while listening to music is also very enjoyable. So overall, a very good headset and a great pick for sound quality for the PS5. As for connectivity, this is Bluetooth, or you can use that dongle, which is what I've been using with the PS5, as well as you can use this wired with a 3.5 millimeter cable. You can use Bluetooth and the dongle simultaneously, which is a very cool thing. So if you wanna to listen to music on your phone while gaming on the PS5, you can do that. That is something that if you're that person and you want that feature, you're gonna absolutely love that. Now, battery life is pretty good here, getting about 36 to 38 hours of usage, which is very good. Now, comfort on the Arctis Nova 7s is also very good. I really like the elastic adjustable top band and the earmuffs are nice and plush. 
However, the bottom of the earmuffs don't quite fully sit on my skull, and this puts slightly more pressure on the top half of the earmuffs. And while this definitely isn't uncomfortable, it's just not as good as some of the others on the list. And really, that is my only issue with this headset. This is obviously going to vary by head size, but I wish those earmuffs just kind of pulled in a little bit more. This is also going to affect sound quality slightly. Now, mic quality here is pretty good, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Steel Series Arctis Nova 7s. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. And with that, let's move on to the number three spot. And that is the HyperX Cloud Alphas. This comes in at $199.99. So let's start with the build quality. Firstly, it's just honestly okay. While this definitely feels sturdy and it's going to last a long time and is durable, it just doesn't look or feel in hand as special as the price tag suggests because Let's be honest, that's a lot of money. That being said, these are really good in the places that matter. So the leather on the top end and earmuffs especially are really, really soft and supple. The ear cups are metal and the mic arm stays exactly where it's supposed to stay with an LED indicator. For controls on the left side, there is a power button, a mic mute button, a USB-C for charging and a detachable mic. Then on the right side, there is a volume wheel. Now, sound quality here is where this excels over the previous two. These give a lot more punch to the lower frequency responses, giving you a more full sound in game as well as with music. The HyperX here gives a more emotional soundscape, especially when combining the background music and explosives in game. That being said, it doesn't have the frequency ranges of number two or one spot that have that really truly amazingly crisp upper frequency response. Those trebles are just awesome. However, do keep in mind, I am nitpicking and I do have superhuman hearing, so it does obviously depend on each person. However, let's talk about connectivity because that is where these have well, one thing that might make you just buy this one and none of the others. Firstly, this is only wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. And the insane thing here is the battery life. This goes up to 300 hours on one charge and that's legitimate. That's what it actually gets. And that is absolutely wild. That's basically where you can just plug these in once and you basically never have to charge them. It's that good. So. This is why for the PS5 specifically, like if you're using this for PC, it's great and it's awesome to have, but for a console, I feel like that just adds to the experience even more. It's something you don't have to worry about and it's something where you can just sit down, pick up that PS5 controller, put the headset on and it always is charged. For that reason, I love it and that's a big reason that it's got good sound quality and it's in the number three spot. All right, now comfort here is really, really good. While it might not look amazing, this sits on your head exactly how it should. My ears sit inside the muffs, the muffs are plush and fully contact my skull evenly and it distributes weight and pressure on my head basically perfectly. Long gaming sessions are no problem and won't cause fatigue. Even with glasses on, these are great. Then the mic quality here is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. And is very similar to the previous headset, but don't take my word for it, take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test for the HyperX Cloud Alpha Wireless. Check, 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 one, two, three. And that is how it sounds. And with that, let's move on to the number two spot. And this is the Razer Kyra Pro Hyperspeed. Coming in at a $199.99 price tag, so the same as the HyperX. Build quality on the Kyra's definitely gets a bump when compared to the previous headsets. This is perfectly designed to complement the PS5 aesthetic, as you can get it in the colorway that well perfectly matches the PS5, which again, I think is cool. The earmuffs have a fabric interior and leather exterior. This has Razer's RGB logos on the ear cuffs, genuine silver brushed metal accents with a metal band, and even with the added metal, the weight is still very, very comfortable on the head. It's overall a very light head. Set. That being said, for the price point, this is still not as premium as I would personally like, so it's similar to the HyperX in that regard. But sound quality, let's talk about it. This is impressive here. The trebles and mids are super, super clear, much clearer than the HyperX, although I still would like slightly more bass. That being said, the sound quality is a very balanced while still having that very full richness. Definitely a step up from a previous headset on this list. In-game directional sound is great as expected. Clicks of guns are very crisp and clear, if you're playing FPS games, that is. And this does have Razer's HyperSense, which is a haptic feedback in the headset. It's definitely not the strongest, and it's a bit gimmicky on this headset, as other Razer headsets do have a better implementation of this haptics, but it is nice that you get the haptics as well as this fantastic sound quality really, really quite good. And if you don't know what the haptics are, it basically allows you to feel it. It's kind of like if you have like a Samsung phone, like they have like the haptics, or if you have ever been in like an Audi product, they have like the haptics 
That's kind of like what it is, but for your ears. So yeah, it's kind of cool to play around with. This isn't the best implementation, but it definitely is there and you can turn it off or on very quickly. For controls on the left side, there is a mic mute switch, volume wheel, power button, and USB-C for charging. And lastly, a detachable mic on that side. Then on the right side, there is a button to switch between the dongle and Bluetooth connections, a game slash chat balance, and a button for adjusting the haptics intensity. This is very easy to adjust those haptics. Like I said, you just click through it and it'll go up levels, three levels, and then it'll go off. So very easy to change it on the fly and can be fun to play around with. As for connectivity, this uses a 2.4 gigahertz USB-C dongle and also has Bluetooth. This also hits a claimed battery life about 11 hours with haptics on and RGB on at the same time. That's gonna drain it quite a bit faster and about 30 hours without that on. So still very good, especially with the haptics and RGB off, but not the 300 hours of the HyperX, which is super impressive and like barely any other headsets do that. Now the Kyra's comfort is great. The leather exterior and fabric interior earmuff design is very supple and just a very comfortable, breathable headset overall. It fits to my head very, very nicely and is comfortable for long gaming sessions. I don't think that you're going to have a problem with comfort if you get the Kyra's. I mean, it's it's just a very, very well-designed, comfortable headset. Now, mic quality here is the best on the list. It's very clear. It doesn't peak with plosives. It's just good. But don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test for the Razer Kyra Pro Hyperspeeds. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But with that, let's move on to the number one best wireless gaming headset for the PS5. This is the Logitech G Pro X 2. Coming in at a $249.99 price tag. That is a lot of money, but it's also a lot of headset. The build quality here is fantastic. This feels like its price point. It's a very premium, luxurious gaming product, as it should be for 250 bucks. This is extremely expensive looking and feeling. There is awesome stitching on the top band. There are adjustable metal bands that are super thick metal, and that continues onto the pieces that hold the ear cups in place with, again, very, very thick metal thicker than like on every other headset. It's just thick for like the build quality and the aesthetic of it and the strength, I guess. It's just awesome. You then again have a thick, slightly coiled cable on the left and right, which looks great and seems robust for long-term durability. You then have these machined metal looking Logitech logos on the left and the right, which look great. And on top of that, you get extra cloth earmuffs so you can well, switch them out. Now on the right side, there is a power on off switch, not a click in hold and let it go and then click on hold to turn it off. I, I honestly don't like those. This has an on and off switch with a light so you actually know whether it's on or whether it's off. I love that. It also will tell you with that light if it like needs to be charged or not. So very good implementation there. You then have a volume wheel, a mic mute button, and a USB-C for charging. Then you have a Bluetooth pairing button and a mode switching button. And lastly, on that side, you have your detachable mic. Then on the other side, you have your 3.5 millimeter connection if you do want to use this in a wired mode. But let's talk sound quality. These are the best on the list. I mean, they are, they're just the best on the list. By far they are. These do a perfect job of balancing clear, crisp trebles, great mids and awesome low frequency response. Listening to music sounds fantastic on these. Now gaming is great. Not only does it give you that emotional side with that deeper, fuller, rich bass, but you get the competitive advantage of having great spatial awareness and those really, really crisp trebles just allow you to hear sounds that you just won't hear with cheaper headsets. Footsteps are easily deciphered directionally and in a wireless headset, this is just about the best you're going to get. And I absolutely love it. It's a lot of money, but if you have the money and you want the best of the best, this is a great headset. For connectivity, obviously this is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. You get Bluetooth and then you can use this in a wired mode with a 3.5 millimeter connection. As for battery life, this beats the rating and this gets about 90 hours of usage, which is actually very, very good. Not quite that 300 hours of the HyperX, but 90 hours is very, very good, very respectable. As for comfort, this is again, the most comfortable headset on the list. The top band is extremely plush. The earmuffs are again, really, really plush. And this sits perfectly on my skull. Because of this, I had basically no fatigue after long gaming sessions, even when wearing glasses. These look larger and heavier, but they aren't. They aren't actually as heavy as you would expect them, especially with all that metal. They did a great job of balancing the weight and just the size of those ear cups. You basically do not have to worry about fatigue. These are great. Now as for the mic, it's comparable to others on the list. It's not as good as the Razer Kyra, but it's still pretty decent, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Logitech GX Pro 2s. Check, check, check. 
One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But again, if you wanna check out any of the five headsets in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I tried to put what I think the best wireless headset is in different price categories, so everyone has something that they can afford here. But obviously, if you want the best of the best, go with the number one spot. But yeah, this is Consumer Deck Review, and I'll see you guys in the next video.